Hi class, in this video, I'm going to explain the heart's conduction system and how it's regulated, and how it regulates the heart rate and then the cardiac output to meet um, the patient's demand. So what we want to look at here is that, let's look at um, the first slide, which explains the conduction system of the heart. Okay, so the conduction system is a sequence of electrical excitation through the heart. The heart generates its own electricity, so it can set its own beat, okay? However, that is still regulated by the autonomic nervous system. But let's look at the heart's own electrical system. It starts with step one, the SA node, which is the pacemaker. So the pacemaker is the SA node, and it relays electricity through the atrial tissue, so the right and the left atrium. And then that electricity is then moved through the AV node, the atrial ventricular node, that will relay the information from the atria into the ventricles. So the AV node relays that information to the ventricles through the His bundle at step three, and then through the left, the left and then the right bundle branches. And then it starts branching out into all these little Purkinje fibers, into all the myocardial tissue, and then the papillary muscle to allow the heart to be excited and then do its work, okay? So the conduction systems, ACA node, AV node, his bundle, left and right bundle branch, and then the Purkinje fiber. So the SA node is the pacemaker and that's gonna set the heart rate, okay? So that starts the whole event. The AV node relays the information from the, uh, from the atria into the ventricle, so there should be a little delay because that delay allows time for the atria to contract and allow for the physical movement of blood into the ventricles, okay? So you need time for that to happen before the ventricles gets excited and contract and move blood through to the lung and to the body, okay? So that's the conduction system of the heart. And this is all described in step by step in what I'm just talking about in more specific words. So you're able to read the words and also listen to what I'm talking about. So let's then look at how does the SA node do this? So when you look at each of these nodal, node, nodal cells, there's gonna be lots and lots of cells in these nodes, okay? And the cells in the nodes are doing these action potentials to allow for the heart to beat. Again, I'm describing it here in words, but let me explain what's happened. So let's take a look at a pacemaker cell. Again, there's many of those. So it's gonna generate membrane potential. So at rest, the SA node has a negative 60 membrane potential. The pacemaker, the SA node, does not like to stay at rest, so it's gonna start having the leaky sodium channels open up at step one. So you can see, step one, sodium is leaking into the pacemaker cells. Okay, so as sodium is leaking into the cells, the sodium carries a positive charge. So it's gonna start charging the potential and becoming more positive here, reaching towards negative 40. Okay, so from negative 60 to negative 40, and that's the sodium influx coming in. Okay, once it reaches threshold, then that's gonna open the calcium channels at step two and depolarization is gonna continue. So calcium carries two positive charge and that's coming into the cell. So as calcium comes into the cell, you go see a big jump in the positive charge. So now from negative 40, it's gonna reach to the about zero and that's the action potential. That's a depolarization of the cell. So now that is gonna be exciting cardiac tissue, okay, and that's gonna allow for contractions of the heart and set the rate of the heart. For the cells to go back to resting membrane potential, that's called repolarization at step three, and that's gonna happen with the efflux or the exiting of potassium at step three. So potassium coming out of the cell, returning the cell to rest. This is an important step because cells have to come back to rest in order for the action potential to go again with the influx of sodium, calcium, and then the efflux of potassium. So each one of this, one, two, three, is one heartbeat, and here's another heartbeat. So SA node does this at very regular and consistent interval. 
So if you have a heart rate of 60 beats per minute, then each action potential is going to take one second and one second. So if you have a 120 beat per minute heart rate, this will be half a second and this will be half a second because it has to be very, very regular for the heart to feel um, that it's beating normally and you're not um, causing an irregular heartbeat. And the ions are very important in setting those regular rates. But we are more complex animals than just having a uh, specific set of rates and letting the heart control its own rhythm. So in this case, the med medulla oblongata of the brainstem does have a cardioregulatory center. And from the cardioregulatory center, you have two types of innervation, okay? That's autonomic. You have the vagus nerve, which is gonna be the parasympathetic innervation, and that's gonna be the rest resting heart, okay? Parasympathetic means rest. And that's gonna innervate the SA node, the pacemaker, and the AV node to make sure to set a resting heart rate. So if you have a 60 beat per minute heart rate, that is set by your vagus nerve. 75 beats per minute, that's set by your vagus nerve, okay? But you wanna do more than just rest. So if you're running, if you're stressed, if there's something else that requires more cardiac output, there is the sympathetic cardiac nerves that also come off, and that's going to stimulate the SA node, the AV node, and the ventricular myocardium. When you innervate the ventricular myocardium, you're going to get a stronger heartbeat, more forceful push, and that's going to allow for higher stroke volume. Again, these blue questions have been converted to uh, multiple choice format questions in the practice quiz. So you want to study the notes and then practice and try to answer the questions here and then attempt to answer them on the practice quiz to allow you to test to see if you really understand the information. So with this, like let's look at a little bit more detail what is actually exactly happening at these junctions when the nerves, the vagus nerve and the sympathetic nerve innervates the heart. And that's explained in this slide. So when the when the nerves innervate the heart, you can see the different innervation of the heart, you can have the sympathetic nerve innervation and the uh, vagus nerve parasympathetic innervation. So each is going to send different kinds of signal to allow for a change in heart rate. So in the sympathetic nerve innervation, you're going to release norepinephrine. So here is the stimulus, same thing I've always done, neuronal stimulus in green, the hormone norepinephrine in red, that's going to bind to the receptors beta 1, and beta 2 receptors. And then that is going to be on the cardiomyocyte side or the SA and AV node cells. And that's going to increase the heart rate, conduction, contractility, and the cardiac output. So that's going to increase heart rate, stroke volume, and cardiac output. And then faster repolarization, faster um, depolarization. The vagus nerve is the opposite. So that's a parasympathetic nerve resting. And that, upon innovation, is going to release acetylcholine, the hormone, and it's going to bind to the muscarinic acetylcholine receptor, or you can just remember it as acetylcholine receptor. This has a negative effect, here, stop effect, to decrease the heart rate, decrease the conduction, decrease stroke volume, and decrease cardiac output. So again, sympathetic increase all those heart effects and parasympathetic decrease all the heart effects. And you can look at the stimulus, the hormone, and the receptor required to create those responses. I have all like that in, the, in this table format. You can also draw it all in little cartoon format to um, similar as we did the endocrine unit to look at what is the effect of the, hormone, uh, the stimulus on the gland, on the hormone, the receptor, and then the response. Okay, of course, this is really, really important in medicine because in medicine, you want to be able to control the heart rate when the heart rate is not in homeostasis. So for example, if a patient comes in and has a very low heart rate and is not able to meet the brain's demand, the metabolic demand, you want to make sure the patient is getting enough ATP, you might need to give them a beta agonist, which is just norepinephrine to speed up the heart rate to allow for more cardiac output. 
or you can give them an anticholinergic, which means going to block anti the acetylcholine effect or block this whole side. So to allow it to have higher cardiac output. If a patient comes in and they have too much cardiac output in the case of high blood pressure, then you want to make sure you slow the heart rate down. And in that case, you can block the effect of the sympathetic system using a beta blocker, which means you're blocking these receptors, blocking the effect of the sympathetic system. Or you can give more effect of the acetylcholine using the acetylcholine agonist, which then will allow for increase in the parasympathetic effect, which is more rest, more sleep, more slow heart rate, slower cardiac output, lower blood pressure. So this is just summary of some of the more complicated topic. You can really practice using this. This are really important um, medical implications and you will want to learn this very well so that you can continue um, in your studies. So please, please study this and then do the practice quiz, study the know some more, journal this, and then take um, the weekly module quiz. Good luck. If you have any questions, please contact me.